Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to PHC 612 Pharmacology of Drugs Affecting the Endocrine, Reproductive System and Musculoskeletal System. Today, we will cover the pancreatic hormones and the anti-diabetic drugs. Here is the checklist which, at the end of the lecture, you should be able to describe the physiology of pancreatic hormones and in the next video, we will cover the pathophysiology and clinical manifestation of diabetes mellitus besides you need to able understand the role of HbA1c and blood glucose level. You also need to be able to classify the type of insulin preparations and also the glucose lowering drugs in terms of their pharmacological effects, the mechanism of action and also the complications. At the end of the video, you need to able to know the complications of prolonged diabetes mellitus. Let's move on to the, our first topic, which is the pancreatic hormones and regulation of insulin secretions. Let's recap back what have you learned in the anatomy and physiology of the pancreas and the respective hormones. Pancreas, as you can see in this picture, is a glandular organ in the upper mid region. However, it fills in as two organs in one a stomach related exocrine organ and a hormone delivering endocrine organ. When pancreas working as an exocrine organ, the pancreas discharges catalysts to separate the proteins, lipids, sugar, and nucleic acid in nourishment. Meanwhile, when pancreas working as an endocrine organ, the pancreas secretes certain hormones, especially the insulin and glucagon, to control the glucose level for the duration of the day. Look at this picture. There is about 1 million islet of Langenhorn throughout the pancreatic glands within the islets at least five hormone producing cells are present such as alpha cells, beta cells, Theta cells, epsilon cell, and F cells. Beta cells is the most abundant cells that present in the islet mass and responsible to produce hormones such as proinsulin, which is the combination of the insulin and C peptide. Beside, beside proinsulin, beta cells also produce the islet amyloid polypeptide or known as amylin or IAPP. These hormones are responsible to inhibit the secretion of glucagon, slow the clearing of the stomach, and send a signal to the fullness to the brain. Glucagon is produced in the alpha cells that comprise 20% of the total islet mass. Beside that, other hormones that are produced by the pancreas such as somatostatin, ghrelin, and pancreatic polypeptide. Proinsulin is a long single side chain protein molecule. Proinsulin pro is processed within the Golgi apparatus of beta cells and packaged into granules. As you can see here, this proinsulin is hydrolyzed into insulin and C peptide. This C peptide is the residual connecting segment. The cleavage occurs by removal of four amino acids in the 31 and 32. Beside that, 64 and 65 positions. Insulin is a small protein with molecule weight of 5AOA. It contains 51 amino acids that arrange in two chains. As you can see here, the A chain and the B chain that link by this disulfide bridge. This insulin and C peptide are secreted in equimolar amounts in response to all insulin secreted glucose. Meanwhile, a small insulin, pro insulin, will be secreted as well. Granules within the beta cells store the insulin in the form of crystal consisting of two ion zinc and six molecules of insulin. For your information, the entire human pancreas contains up to 8 mg of insulin there representing approximately about 200 biological units. Let's recap back the production of the natural insulin in our body and their mechanism of action. The endogenous production of insulin in beta cells is triggered by few factors 
such as rising blood glucose level. The presence of the amino acids such as uh, leucine, arginine, and also the presence of fatty acid and keto bodies also able to stimulate the insulin release. As you can see here, the alpha-2 adrenergic stimulation will inhibit the release of insulin whereas the beta adrenergic stimulation promotes the insulin release. High level of glucagon promote the release of the insulin but somatostatin inhibit the release of the cells. Another hormone which are glucose dependent uh, insulinotropic polypeptide or also known as GIP and glucagon like polypeptide or known as GLP stimulates the insulin. Drugs such as sulfonylureas, meglitinides, acetylcholine stimulates the insulin release. Meanwhile, drugs such as diazocyte, phenethon, vimplastin, and colchicine inhibit the release of insulin. The next video will explain what is the GIP and GLP. Please take note about this because it relates to anti-diabetic drugs that are able to mimic these hormones. Let's first take a look at how the incretin system helps control postprandial blood glucose levels. After we consume food, increased luminal levels of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins rapidly induce the release of various peptide hormones and signaling factors into the bloodstream from the enteroendocrine cells in the gut. Two of these hormones, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, or GIP, and glucagon-like peptide 1, or GLP-1, have been shown to stimulate insulin release from the pancreas. GIP is released from K cells, which are predominantly located in the proximal small intestine, whereas GLP-1 is produced by L cells, which are primarily found in the distal small intestine and colon. GIP and GLP-1 travel through the bloodstream to the pancreas. In the presence of glucose, these hormones bind to G-protein coupled receptors on beta cells, resulting in enhanced insulin biosynthesis and secretion. In healthy individuals, incretin hormones appear to be responsible for between 50 and 70 percent of the insulin release after a meal, although this point is still a matter of some debate. Higher insulin levels promote glucose uptake by the liver, skeletal muscle, and fat tissue, thereby lowering the concentration of circulating glucose. From this video, the GIP, which is glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, and GLP-1, glucagon-like polypeptide, are produced in the presence of the glucose. This hormone will bind to the g couple receptors in the beta cells of the pancreas, which activated the CAMP to induce the secretion of insulin from storage genome. Besides that, GLP-1 also able to cross the blood-brain barrier and decrease the appetite by telling the brain cukup-cukuplah tu asyik mengunyah hajim masa leca. And the GLP-1 also able to slow the gastric emptying resulting less glucose absorption. This is the clear picture of the secretion of insulin by the presence of glucose in the blood system. The glucose will be in flux through glucose core transported to or known as GLUT2 in the beta cells of the pancreas. The glucose uptake will rise the ATP level through glycolytic phosphorylations. This ATP will inactivate the potassium channel which cause the polarize of the membrane and close the ATP dependent potassium channel. This situation lead to opening of the calcium channel allowing influx of calcium ion. This event will lead to release of the insulin from their storage granule. Besides that, as you can see in the picture, the presence of incretin, which are GLP-1 and GIP, will activate the CAMP, which promote the release of insulin too. The insulin secretogogous drug, such as sulfonylureas and meglitinate, exploits parts of this mechanism, which we'll discuss later in the next video. This picture shows the mechanism of insulin action. When insulin diffuses into targeted tissues such as in the liver, muscle, and adipose tissue, 
from the circulations and bound to specialized receptor and hence will regulate the energy metabolism. As you can see in this diagram, insulin receptors consist of two covalently linked heterodimers that containing alpha subunit, which the recognition and binding site, and as well the beta subunit that contain the tyrosine kinase. When insulin binds to this alpha subunit of its receptor, it will activate the receptor and through a conformational changes which cause the phosphorylation of the beta subunit. This in turn induces the tyrosine kinase activities. The tyrosine kinase activity begins a cascade of cell phosphorylations which will activate the mitogen activated protein kinase or known as MAP kinase this responsible for mitogenic effects. It also can activate the phosphatidinyl acetyl 3 kinase or known as PI3K pathway that is responsible for metabolic effects such as lipogenesis and glycogenesis. This PI3K activation causes translocation of GLUT4 containing vesicle to the receptor that promoting the glucose influx to induce the glycolysis. Can you recap back what is the glycolysis in your biochemistry course? Let me tell you again, glycolysis is the process of breaking down glucose or other words as sugar metabolism in the body that contributes to the production of the energy which is the ATP. This PI3K pathway also promotes the cell survival and the proliferation.